One elite team is out to save lives. No medical crews on scene yet. Air ambulance is required. We've just been called to a road traffic accident and the reports are that one of the patients is not breathing. These are the men and women who work for the air ambulance. It's taking the hospital to the patient. Open your eyes because it's easier for us to assess you. Okay. Ah, uh, you can focus on me, you all right? Yeah, spot on. Require both carriageways closed now. With highly qualified doctors on board, air ambulances bring a hospital intensive care unit to the roadside. We have the skills to stay and play, not scoop and run. Yeah, at the end of the day, it could be our family lying there who needs help. Funded mostly by charitable donations, air ambulances respond to over 14,000 call-outs a year. Without the public raising money for us, we simply couldn't operate. There you go. Yeah. It's really, really important to be a team when you're out there. And working with some absolutely brilliant guys. Some of these have to reapply for the lifting. No mind that bollocks, get the kettle up. You do need the banter because you do see some things. It's the best bit of the day. I absolutely love my job. <laughs> Let's have a good day. Thruxton Racetrack shares the tarmac at Thruxton Airfield with the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Air Ambulance. The duty doctor today is anaesthesia consultant Professor Charles Deakin. I love my hospital work, but the, the pre-hospital side of things gives me that extra buzz in terms of uh, really getting to patients who are desperately unwell and, and being able to deliver that life-saving care. Charles is a great team player. He thoroughly enjoys um, getting stuck in with us and, and, and doing everything he has to do. The team have been called to an incident on the Isle of Wight. A young boy has been knocked down by a car, resulting in a serious head injury. Although it's difficult to, to be sure how bad the incident's going to be, children often do run out across the road very suddenly, which gives vehicles little time to slow down and brake. And it's quite common to find children with very severe injuries having been hit at fairly high speed by vehicles. So there's the wood, just the left hand of where it's going to be. There's the road, you can see it there. In fact, off that at 12 o'clock. Yes, an ambulance, yeah. Yeah, so it's not near the gritty gave. Spotted. We had a look overhead as we uh, circled the incident looking for somewhere to land, but that's a useful uh, time for us to, to try and assess what's gone on, have a look at, look at the vehicles that have been involved, see where the casualty is, which sometimes gives us a clue of, as to how far they've been thrown. Uh, so we'll shove it in the field just opposite the ambulance. That's only a little edge, isn't it? As long as your legs are longer than Dave, you'll be fine. Hey, sir. Good to go. And Just be aware of the rising ground, 12 o'clock, please. Yeah. yeah. Watch that. Hello again. Hello. 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 We think we, we can't get an age up. We think it's about 12 or 13. Getting off the bus, walked out in front of the car, bullet point the car oh, yeah. there. We can't get anything out of them at the moment. Just very agitated. Okay. Hello, 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 hi. Hello. Hi. This is this is Jack. Okay, Jack has been very irritated. I don't know if it's cerebrally yeah, or if it's yeah. just that he's yeah. he's, he's a young yeah, man and he's sure, scared. Yeah. We've managed to call him, but actually keep him still is very hard. Jack, we've got a doctor here. Remember I told you a doctor was gonna come out and see you? 
he was very chatty and now he's gone a little bit almost. Has he? Not quite as not responsive. responding. Okay. Right, Jack, move. Jack, open your eyes for me. Come on. Just come round and get closer. His limbs seem to be intact. He didn't have any serious chest or abdominal injuries, but he'd had a very serious bang to his head. By the time we arrived, he was beginning to deteriorate, he was losing consciousness and he was becoming combative, which is indicative of, of quite a serious head injury. It was certainly potentially life-threatening. God, how fast was the car going? Do you know? We think about possibly 20 miles an hour. He actually saw, the, the car saw the boy, so he was slowing oh, down okay. and trying and to then... slow as much as he could. Jack, I'm just having a quick listen to your breathing. Good lad, you're doing really well. Are you going to feel the doctor listening to your, your back? No, okay. no, 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 mate. Jack, Jack, we need you to lay nice and still. Yeah. Lay nice and still. We're going to get. Just please, yeah, yeah. We're going to get you onto the yeah. bed. Perfect, okay. yeah. And nice yeah. and safe. Right, I think he needs to come to Southampton. I think so too. Uh, so the question is whether we take him like this or pop him off to sleep. I think we're going to need to pop him off to sleep, really. Just, yeah. just by the yeah. level of agitation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he's not able to cooperate or understand what's going on. The safest way to treat him on scene and make sure that he remained stable was to actually give him an anaesthetic uh, and put him to sleep so that we can control his physiology in the aircraft as we take him to Southampton. So we, we need to ideally get him onto the scoop, yeah. all right, then scoop onto the okay. trolley and then put him to sleep on the trolley. Yeah, yeah. Do that, uh, yeah a little bit of without that, I'm going to pop the cannula in, thanks. I'm going to give him a little bit of something just to settle him just down. down. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then we'll, we'll do the proper answer. Okay. No, Jack, you were telling me about how much you like school. Oh, What's your favourite lesson at school? Oh. 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 Do you have a little scratch on your arm? Well done. Oh. Well done, well oh, done. Well done. Oh, well done. Oh, well done. Oh, well done. Oh, well done. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right, well done. Well done. Bye. Having a doctor on board, uh, we have the ability to perform procedures uh, and interventions at the roadside that would otherwise have to wait until the patient arrived in the hospital. RSI involves um, a sequence of anaesthetic drugs given in very quick succession that put you to sleep and also paralyse all your muscles so that we can control the breathing. It lowers the blood pressure down towards safe limits helps slow the heart rate down and it helps the blood flow to the brain and all the other vital organs. I'm, I'm a parent myself so I, I have every sympathy for parents on scene in terms of uh, the, the distraught and, and um, difficulties that they're, they're going through. Jack, keep uh, still. Yeah, Jack, all right. Jack, oh, my love. Yes, do you want to hang on to his head? Have you got him? Yeah, I've got him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, that's great. Hello. Are you mum? Yeah. Hello. Um, he's had a bit of a bump, as you can see, um, and uh, you can probably hear he's quite agitated. Yeah. Um, so um, we need to take him to Southampton, really, uh, oh, so really? that we can have a proper look at him. Okay, yeah. can I see him before you take him? Uh, you're, you're welcome to. He's thrashing around. He won't know who you are or what's going okay. on, but if you want to say hello to him quickly. Yeah, right. we're, in, okay. we're in quite a rush, but um, okay, all right. Fine. OK. Thank you. We're going to take you to hospital. So what would you like me to draw up? Some sucks. Thank you, Ronium. Sorry, I'm just going to squeeze in there Doctor to get to the drip and things. Room, Sorry. Right? Yeah, all right. OK, right. thank you. Yeah! Jack, Jack, you're yeah. fine, you're fine. Yeah. OK. Yeah, and let, let's just give that propofol two sex to work and then we, we, we need to lift them onto the stretcher. Yeah. All right, we've done a great job, that's fine. All right. Our assigned is procedure not without its risks. Um, obviously, if you've got a patient who is breathing and you stop them breathing, you need to be 100% sure that you can safely control their breathing. So it is uh, quite a delicate intervention that has to be done carefully, safely and quickly. Idle, connected and functioning. Yep. IV line tension, not the blood pressure on. And we've got spare IV. OK. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. All right, everyone happy? Take a look. OK, Pat, have you got gum elastic breathing, please? Gum elastic breathing. Okay. Thank you. OK, and bougie out, don't you? Interesting. OK, a bit of air for the cuff, please. OK. Good, CO2, lovely. OK, so you can relax with that pressure. Perfect, thank you. Well done, everyone. Keep holding the head. Fantastic. OK, all happy? Yeah, Great, OK. You right there, Pat? Yeah. Well done. Well done. That's lovely. All right, so we've popped him off to sleep. All right, so he's fast asleep, so he's not going to remember any of this when he's, when he's better. All right. 
So, are you able to get over to the hospital? Yeah, yeah, or maybe we'll, we'll even we'll the Right, we'll okay. Try to close as soon as we can. Well done. Mary's on the Isle of Wight would have been appropriate if his injuries were minor, but obviously with his head injury, uh, we were worried that he may need uh, care of the neurosurgeons. And Southampton is the nearest neurosurgical unit. It's a 14-minute flight to Southampton, a journey that could take up to three and a half hours by road and ferry. Yeah, that's why I'm in there. Lovely, that's better. Right, thank you. Right. right, do you want us to do the handover and then lift over? Right, OK, so this is uh, Jack, uh, who ran out in front of a car behind a bus. When we left Jack at the hospital, I think we all felt that we'd made a significant contribution to giving him every chance for good outcome. Um, we'd managed to stabilise him on the scene, we'd kept him stable in flight, and uh, when we arrived in the hospital, he was in very good shape, certainly much better than when we arrived on scene. At that stage, we didn't know what his long-term outcome would be. He was heading off for a scan of his head, and it was only based on that information that we'd then have a, a better idea of quite how serious his injuries were. Durham Tees Valley Airport, operations base of the Great North Air Ambulance. As Deputy Director of Operations, Jane Peacock runs a tight ship. The way I describe the team is we're all like links in a chain. We all need each other to work. Jane, she's a good boss. She's passionate about what she does. And uh, she keeps us all in check anyway. That's one thing for certain. Working with a team of men is lovely. They're all dead good. You have to have nice little systems so that they get the cleaning done. Manning the phones and deciding when to deploy the helicopter on this shift falls to paramedic Colin. Elderly lady came in as just a fall, but now she's, oh. uh, we think the foot's hanging right off. Oh, bless her. Okay. And the foot appears to be detached from the body. Because of the extreme nature of the break, the rapid response paramedic on the ground has asked for a trained trauma doctor to attend. Today, that's emergency medicine consultant, Dr. Dave Bramley. So what's this come through as an elderly lady who yeah. has fallen and reports of amputated foot? Yeah. I suspect this will be quite a nasty open ankle fracture with the foot off ending. Yeah. Immediately nine o'clock now, there's a four parallel rows of grey houses and it's just in the middle of the house closest to us. Oh yeah, God, that was a good spot, Dave. The patient is on the outskirts of Newcastle. It's taken just 16 minutes to get here. Yeah, Carl, could you get an update from scene? It is quite difficult to land here. Yeah, I'll just go to Jane. Uh, you will be required. There is uh, quite considerable hemorrhage over. Yeah, Roger, thanks. An injury of that severity can be life-threatening if it's not managed correctly. If you just leave somebody to bleed, they're going to bleed to death. Oh, on the right, man. Does that feel any good? There's a horse in that one ah, right. yeah, just over there, a big shy horse. All ah, right, I did see that. Yeah. Because it was a built-up area, it was the only choice with other obstacles that were in our way, like wires and things. That was the only suitable landing site. Okay, yeah, you clear out. I'll come and catch you. Just my foot so far, 
Get on me back. Get out of it, you bloody back. Ah, get on me. Oh, my bloody foot's hurting. That's it. The patient used her panic button after her fall. The carer who responded is now standing by to transport the heavy medical equipment. I'm going to take the hemorrhage pack, Jane, and just go. Right. See you then. Right up this one. Thank you. Up this one. Hi, Ali. How are you doing? Hello. My name's Dave Bramley. I'm one of the doctors with the air ambulance. Yeah. How are you feeling at the moment? Oh, shattered. And what happened when you had this? How did this happen? Did you go dizzy or have any pain in your chest before this happened? No. Do you think you've just tripped over? Or did you go a bit dizzy before? Well, I was weak. My legs were weak. Right. And I just fell over. Right, OK. Having stopped the bleeding, the paramedic on scene has already put 86-year-old Margaret's foot back in place. And to help brief Dave and Jane, he took photos of the injury before strapping it up. She basically off-ended the whole of her foot and ankles. She'd snapped the whole foot off there and folded the whole foot back on herself. So other than a little bit of skin holding it on, there was nothing actually connecting her foot to her lower leg. Well, you've obviously broken the bone down in your ankle. Oh, yes. It's no surprise with that. Most people would be screaming the place down. I certainly would be. Um, be screaming the place down with an injury like that. But she was just marvellous. The, the road paramedic had rightly applied a tourniquet because there was a, quite a lot of blood loss from this injury and also put some Sealox gauze on the end to control the bleeding, which he'd done an amazing job with. <laughs> so what we need to do is get you off to hospital and then get it sorted out properly. Uh, You're going to end up with an operation for this one. Okay. The age of a patient with that type of injury there, it's, it's not straightforward that you see injury, it's the other complications that go with it because she's older. Right. If you take a deep breath in, do you get any yeah. pain in your chest? No. no. Okay. Just feel your pulse. And do you take any medicines normally? Oh, it's stuck on it. Do you have a list anywhere in the house? Yes. Despite her age and the severity of the injury, Margaret is stable. Dave's decided against taking her in the helicopter. We're parked, we have to climb over a wall and go onto a field. So we're getting a land ambulance to come, because by the time we've carried you over there, got to the aircraft, we could have had you halfway to hospital in the ambulance. I'm not going in the helicopter. Oh, sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> oh. Margaret, you do a bit of motorcycling in your spare yes. time? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> I thought you must have, having it in the front room there. Hey, well, you've not lost your personality, have you? You can still have a giggle. Yes. Bless you. She was obviously being a kind grandma and keeping it there for one of her grandsons. I think she'd have a go as well if she could. <laughs> you must be real hardcore, Margaret. You can take the pain. Not like most men, no, eh? <laughs> we'll give that bandage um, another few minutes, then we're going to loosen this tourniquet off. Uh -huh because I think that should control the bleeding. But if it oozes again, we'll have to tighten that up. I know it's not very comfortable, but we might need to do it till we get to hospital. Just put your arm straight for us, sweetheart, that's it. If you've had a few problems before with your, with your heart, etc., what we might try is a bit of gas and air to breathe in. Have you ever used gas and air before? No. It's good oh, stuff. It's fantastic, Margaret. You feel like you've had ten pints. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Just pop it in your mouth and just suck it nice and hard. And you feel a little bit giddy. That's it, that's it. Big breaths. Now help with the pain for you. Nice big breaths, Margaret. That's it. Margaret, can you trust me, my love? If you think you're young, then you've been screaming the place down. You're absolutely doing yeah. things. Ready, steady. Hang on. One, two, three. <laughs> Push, 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 push. Can you get in with that chair? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not going to fall. A little bit so Just good. a big push. One, One two, two, three. three. Oh, that's, that's it, Margaret. Well done. Well done. That's brilliant. Okay. Excellent. That's it all done. Margaret, okay, I'm going to tip you back now, all right? Nice. <laughs> just keep your arms in, Margaret. Okay. 
Back to tea side. Tony had a bit of skin hanging on, didn't she? Yeah. Will they save that, do you think? Yeah, they will. For me, she still can wriggle her toes and... Yeah. Oh, what were they all hanging off? Yeah. Ooh. It was folded totally back. Ooh. Yeah, it'll be a few weeks before she's back on a motorbike. Oh, <laughs> she was fantastic though, wasn't she? She was. I told you the hard car, the old biddies up north, you know, that just takes the pain. The Thames Valley and Chiltern Air Ambulance can reach anywhere in Berkshire, Buckinghamshire or Oxfordshire within 15 minutes. Helicopter pilot Jez Charlton is preparing for his shift. Since I was a lad I've wanted to fly. I've been with the Air Ambulance seven and a half years. I was in the RAF before that for 35 years. But retirement looms. Jez is fast approaching his 60th birthday. When you hit 60 you cannot any longer fly single pilot commercial, so I can't fly passengers on my own. Uh, the air ambulance is just a single pilot op, so that's the end of flying. Uniforms handed back, doesn't matter how fit and well you are. Jason, just speaking. Okay, we know what it is then. We'll head that way. 926. Thank you, mate. Bye. The call is to a paintballing activity centre where a player has injured his leg. The helicopter has been requested as the remote location has limited road access. Helimed 2-4's duty doctor is Neil Thompson, a consultant in emergency medicine. Is that a paintballing type of thing? It is, yeah. If he's covered in lots of red dots, no, he's not very good. Probably not blood. When we get in the overhead, they are going to set off a smoke for us. Uh, that'll be rather nice. Oh, right, lovely. Oh, I had a smoke grenade go off before, have you, Jess? Uh, oh, yeah, I've got it. <laughs> Every day and every flight is different. The big piloting challenge is finding a landing site close enough to scene that is safe, that I can get the crew down into and they can get to scene quickly. OK, so you've got a bloke in yellow just to the uh, right of that double-decker bus who's waving at us. Yeah, OK. All right, well, I'm going to go into where the smoke is, where that bloke is in yellow now. OK. This is my area yeah. of landing. They were letting off these smoke flares and we were flying in, it was like something out of a Vietnam War movie. This is where the smoke doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> All clear left. OK, you are clear on the right, there's some drums, but your tail's well clear, your side's well clear. Yeah, okay, it looks clear. A little bit of scuff blowing away. Yeah, that's right. All good left. Got banana. OK. okay. <laughs> That'd be lovely, thanks, Steve. Cheers. Where are we going? I take it the range is shut. Hello, Alex. My name's Neil. This is Rich. What's happened? I have seemed to have broken some part of my leg. Maybe oh, one, two, three places, I'm not sure. Oh, I can I explain it? It hurts very, very much. Judging by the amount of yellow on you, that you're not very good at this. 
<laughs> Talking about the paint splats and the, uh, the funny side of the situation would definitely distract from pain. So important bits, head, neck, chest, tummy, hips, all okay. So, whereabouts is the worst bit, mate? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's further it's down, all the, way down, down the shin. Yeah, okay, I can't right there, Look, it's broken. It's not in the right place. Until we get your shoe off, we won't know exactly how much damage you've done. Until we've got some pain relief into you, we won't be able to do that. So, you want Entinox and you want the... Uh... <laughs> Entinox and some splints. Yeah. Cheers. Working as a small team is great. I've been able to join in under the supervision of, of the paramedics and doctors. Well, over the years, I've learned a, a fair amount and I admire what they do. So when I have to stop flying, I have no intention of retiring. I'm going to be training as a paramedic. Right, buddy. This stuff is fantastic. So the trick with this is you need to take nice, deep, slow breaths. Might make you feel ever so slightly lightheaded. When you've got a lung full, hold your breath for a second and then breathe out slowly. Yeah? How's that doing? Told you it was good. Uh, Antinox is called a laughing gas because it does make a few people laugh. Different people react in different ways, but certainly uh, with Alex, the, uh, the laughing gas really was laughing gas. So, Alex, you tell us when you think you're happy for me to take your shoe off and move your leg around. Keep going. Um, that looks broken, but you knew that anyway. What we're going to do, rather than me prodding and poking and finding out a little bit more about it, okay, we're going to give you some medicine to take the pain away. Um, we're going to get splint onto that. We're going to get you onto a stretcher, get you nice and comfortable, and uh, get you off to hospital. Rich, we'll, we'll just turn up, we? if I support his knee, are you right to grab his ankle and just sort of bring it a little bit that way, a little yeah. bit that way, and then just slide the splint yeah, in underneath it? Yeah. Okay, not so fast. Nice, deep, hold your breath in top press. Get you nice and swimming. Okay, and we're going to lift your leg. When we lift this up, just if you lose that for the moment, yeah. lose that, get your legs straight. Okay, let's go. The pilot's priority is always to make sure the aircraft is serviceable and ready to go. I try to help as much as I can. I can certainly uh, help to put on a blint, for example. I can do a little bit of CPR if they need me. Um, I'm normally the holder of fluids or syringes ready for injections, that sort of thing. And it's uh, put me in good stead for retraining as a paramedic. Alex? Slide on the gas, mate. That's the worst bit done. Can you feel me touching your toes? Yeah. Wiggle your toes around a little bit for me. Perfect. Just stay still. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a vertical left, uh, exiting into the 11 o'clock over the trees. There is hundreds of the trees in the 3 and 2 o'clock, there's no wires. So, all happy and oil lifting. By air, it takes just eight minutes to get Alex onto the helipad and delivered into the emergency department at Frimley Park Hospital. Alex, 23-year-old, was paintballing in yeah. a woods near Reading, uh, was running along, caught some uh, loose ground, came over on his, on his ankle, inversion onto his uh, right leg. It's a fantastic job. Yeah, it's nice to be, you know, just making a small difference. I'm just taking the team to scene and they're doing all the work, but yeah, we work as a team, so that's good. Back in Darlington, the weather's on the turn. What time will start raining? Heavy. Right, go and put your bets on. Um, three eight mil off. You're going three eight hours. I'm going longer. I'm going forty. 
I'll go three. I'll go three down in between them. And May, what we say, three six. Oh, I'm going three nine fifty. Is this to start of rain or heaviness? This is till we go the other way. <laughs> right, and now the forfeit. You've got to run, to run it to the other side of the airfield naked. In the lightning. <laughs> <laughs> With a metal tin on your head. <laughs> right, here we go. Can you hear it on the hangar? Who's got 39.45? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah, you can hear it! Oh, yes, I have. Yes, thank you very much. I must be the chief pilot. <laughs> Hello, Air Ambulance. Yep, six rays available. A170, yeah, what is it? Head injury, major trauma, high speed, yeah. Jane's taken a call to a motorcycle accident. A 12 minute flight away in Yorkshire. myself but uh, I've attended enough bike accidents to know over the years that you know all it takes is a stretch of road and a fast bike and the two together can be lethal. Should be all right there. Yeah. I'll do what if you can. Very great. Okay guys you are clear out into the 11 o'clock. Yes Dave. Dr. Dion Arbid's first job is to establish how the casualty ended up in the hedge. Hey Hello. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, how are you doing? Right, this is Troy. He's yeah. probably come off not far from your helicopter. Yeah. Um, he's carried on going on his bike, he's hit the curb. Bike's come to a halt, he's carried on down here. He's got a bit of right shoulder. No obvious other injury. Um, so just the shoulder? Just shoulder, very amnesic with it. Yeah. Um, he, he does not know how he's got here, and that seems to be getting worse as we go along. Coming off a bike, I think Troy's travelled on another 15 or 20 metres at least uh, to get him into the hedge to where he ended up. He's just lucky he was wearing adequate biking gear and leathers, which has protected him, but where he's ended up has made it very difficult to assess him for more serious injuries. Right, just keep your head nice and still, Troy. Troy. Yeah. Hello, mate. My name's Dion. I'm the airman's doctor. Hello. Hi, yeah. I take it you can't remember what happened? No. OK. Are you normally totally fit and well? Yeah. And you've got no pain anywhere apart from your arm on this side? No, only that right shoulder. Just your right shoulder? OK. That really is very awkward. <laughs> I mean, he's got a distracting injury, that's the only, the only problem. So we can't clear and get him to self-extricate, really. Troy didn't seem to have anything life-threatening, but obviously he's got a significant arm injury, um, which may well be distracting him for other spinal injuries, so we've got to take every precaution, just in case there's something underlying there that he hasn't realised or hasn't noticed. What's he had for pain? He hasn't had anything yet. Nothing yet, yet. OK. You haven't had any pain relief yet, have you? No. I'm, I'm, loving, I'm loving the drip stand. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Adapt, overcome, improvise. Um, Pre-hospital care does rely on you having um, a degree of improvisation on scene and just using what you've got to hand. Now, we need to think about how we're going to get him out, Stu. Uh, 
We can try the scoop in behind him and get him out, but looking at it, there's so many branches overlying him, I think it's going to be very difficult and we're going to snag the scoop yeah. so badly. We're going to struggle. Unless anyone's got any better ideas, my inkling would be to guess the, the fire lads to just clear it. We have no equipment to extract this patient at the moment. We need the fire brigade. Right, well, there's nothing we can do. I don't want to risk moving him. He's not time critical, so we'll wait for the, uh, the fire crew to come and stop chopping. And he's managed to plough himself down through a hedge and into like a tunnel of brambles and trees. Um, and he's in a ditch and he's really, really stuck, to be fair. Will we need to transport him or will he be gone by land? I think once we do actually get him out of this mess. Yeah, we'll let you know. Uh... Right. Hello. Hello. We've got a bit of an interesting hey, problem. Hey. Right, so basically you wanted all this putting out here. Well, we can take them either way, um, but at the minute we need to get a scoop round him, we can't because there's, yeah, just, so you, you there's branches coming over him as well. What's the situation? That means we can get him with a saw, so if we clear this here, yeah. then you can do a body roll on him. Will that suit you? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you brought Alan Titchmarch with you, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Better than most he's had. Yeah. We've got a brewing thunderstorm behind us. <laughs> Can I hear a rumble of thunder? Shit. No pressure, guys, but there's thunder coming. <laughs> Helicopters and lightning do not mix. Uh, if lightning hits a helicopter, it can very easily bring it down. Right, now the tricky bit. I'm just going to squeeze myself through a bit more. One, two, three. Well done, Stu, can you see if we can get this bottom end? We were very conscious that thunderstorms were approaching and we could see them in the distance, the thunder and the lightning coming closer and closer. Just as we got them out, uh, the heavens opened and uh, down came the rain. OK. We don't have a fair vehicle here. Right. OK, can everyone grab the scoop? And let's get him in the vehicle. Lots of stuff on the foot there, I think. Sorry. Troy, listen to us. Have you still just got pain in your arm? Yeah. Yeah, nowhere else. Once Troy was out of the bush uh, and I deemed him not to have any further life-threatening injuries, um, the race was on to get the aircraft airborne and back to base before we were hit by the storm. Our kit's in, isn't it, Stu? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Well, this is going to be fun. Behave yourself. We'll go towards the bright bit initially. They always tell you, don't move towards the light. <laughs> yeah. It looks alright over there, doesn't it? Yeah, we're alright. At Benson, colleagues are gathering to say goodbye to retiring pilot Jez Charlton. You sure you can't see them? No, neither can I. It's Jez's final day at work, and he's on his way back from his last ever mission. I know that when I land, that's it. I'm never likely to touch the controls of a helicopter again. And I suppose any uh, helicopter guys out there will know how that feels. Um, I'm gutted. Yeah. 
we are a very tight team. We all train together, we work together, um, you know, we fit together, everybody knows how each other works. So when a member of the team leaves, it leaves a massive hole. I get a buzz every time I come into work and I'm going to miss it all. <laughs> you want a bit of company? Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. We'll walk with you, is that alright? <laughs> yeah, of course. These guys are absolutely the best. They are at the top of their medical tree the doctors the paramedics it it's a difficult job to get here we, you know a lot of people apply and few make it the people out there if they know they're getting an air ambulance they know they're getting the best medical care there is and these guys deliver it the air ambulance is special fundraisers, doctors, paramedics, everybody is an integral part of the team. And without that team, we couldn't give the level of care that we give to our patients. That is the ultimate thing that I would have dreaded for somebody else to be injured because of me. I'll deal with, you know, my injuries and anything else like that, and loss, even loss at bike, which were my pride and joy. I still deal with that. It's, that's not compared to a human life. Some people think I'm fairly brave for doing what I do. But it's the patients who are very, very stoical, very brave uh, and inspiring. From day to day, I never know what I'm going to see, what's going to pan out in front of me. Um, so I don't think you can ever get to the point where you think, I've done it all, I've got the T-shirt. I know we're doing incredible work out there, but it's really dangerous. It's with the most critical patients at the most critical time. I come into work and I fly a fantastic helicopter with a very capable team which saves people's lives. And I think that is it in a nutshell. Ah, oh, ready for a nice bath, nice cup of coffee when I get in. Do it all again tomorrow. <laughs>